Hello everyone, and welcome back. Today we're going to be playing Hard Space Shipbreaker. It's a game where you're in a dystopian future where humankind has went and um, successfully mastered space travel, and now all the derelict ships out there have to be recycled somehow, and so that's our job, is to do that. Um, it's an interesting game. It's uh, a fun way to go and look at a puzzle, from instead of creating something, uh, but instead you're going to go and tear it apart into component pieces. Um, let's just go get started. This is uh, early access. This is 0. Uh, 15 or 0. 0.1.5. But let's go take a look. Oh, good morning, Shipbreaker. Thank you. All right, so when you start the game, uh, quotas are pretty much objectives you fill, and once you go and complete them, that will go and increase your rank. That allows you to do opens up um, the ability to upgrade your equipment and uh, work on more complicated crafts. Um, but today, we're just going to be doing the basic level 2 crafts. Level 1 is just a training craft that you begin with. Alright, and over here on the right you can see there's a picture of the ship. It also goes and tells you uh, the mass, the volume, all the uh, interesting um, systems that are going to be in there. These are going to be the most expensive things and the most lucrative things to go and salvage. And then some basic hazards and basic component makeup of the ship on the bottom over here. So fire, coolant, electricity, and I think uh, pressurization. Um, oh, here we go. Here's one that has 7% chairs. That's 8% uh, chairs. Ooh, wow. Let's do that. I like chairs. Let's do this. So all the ships that we're looking at, their basic ship type you have is the mackerel ship, and that's what we're going to look at today. And really, what we want to focus on is uh, we're going to be ripping right, it apart. Governor. This here's another mackerel. Here's a little history lesson for you. The entire mackerel class was decommissioned once they juiced the force of the rail gates. Link scooped up thousands of them on the cheap. Now finish up your work order and salvage as much as you can of each ship before moving on to the next. We call it using the whole buffalo. You want to pay off that mountain of debt you're carrying on your back? That's how it's done. We were up. All right. So as you continue moving up in the game, you get access to break the, to do ship breaking on more complicated ships. The mackerel is kind of be the first ship you're gonna come across, and that's the one we're gonna focus in today. Um, this is going to be the best way to do it. This is going to be the most efficient way to do it. We're just going to go through here and kind of explore how the ship is in general put together. And we're going to rip it apart to all its component pieces and um, salvage as much as we can. Um, I'm sure you're going to find speedrunners and people who say the most efficient way of going through and doing this will be find the most lucrative parts, rip them out of the ship, and then leave and then find a new ship. But we're going to go and just take up take apart the whole thing. Just so you know how what's what to expect when uh, breaking these type of ships. Um, just a note: we're playing a mode that doesn't give you an auction restriction, nor does it give you the 15-minute uh, shift restriction, which you get in the normal game. Uh, when you play, I strongly suggest playing a normal setting because it is an interesting um, challenge to go and have keep an eye on your auction as well as how much time you have left in your shift. But before we go, it looks like for my last game, I'm kind of low on fuel, so we'll go in this terminal here and I'll buy some resources. Welcome All right. to Vendatron 9000. So I'm playing on the computer, so everything's going to be keyboard and mouse for me. This game is is pretty obviously designed to be used on, on a pad or a gaming control game controller, but I'm going to be using the keyboard and mouse today because that's what I got. Thank you for your purchase. One of the things that got me hung up on here is getting out of this uh, panel. Uh, I didn't see it in the bottom right here to get back. Hit tab. That's the only way you can really Have a nice unlock day. from the panel. All right. Let's go and correct my course here. All right. So before we get started, let's hit tab to get rid of the top right work order. We don't need to see that today. Um, the general kind of navigation or what what we have here is uh, we see the ship in the center of, the, of this bay and the back right and left you see um, these kind of other bay areas that are red that's the furnace um, things that really can't be salvaged or things you actually blow up or destroy or just trash uh, goes to the furnace that's the pods you end up transporting the, uh, the element the equipment to 
Um, in front of those, you're gonna see these blue areas, these blue um, stations, I guess. These are where you can go and process things. These are things that are salvage sal salvageable that you can go and um, that can be reused. So that can be like the panels on the ship. That can be uh, um, any other kind of industrial strength um, um, elements or uh, items in the ship. And then there's also on the bottom you see here is the barge. And the barge is where pretty much anything that's been highly refined or commercial items can go. So the antenna, the engines themselves, the thrusters, any electrical equipment, a lot of the stuff's gonna actually end up going to the barge. It's really only gonna be the plating on the outside that's gonna go to um, these blue bays here. And then anything else that we, we end up wrecking or is of low quality, uh, such as light panels are gonna go to the furnace. All right, with that, let's get started. I do have a scanner. All right, and right now the scanner only tells me what the structural elements are on the ship. And it is, there is a range to it, so as you get closer, you'll get more details. And what we're seeing here in the orange areas, these are kind of like steel beams, or these are like heavy structural members. Um, it's gonna require a, heavy, a higher level cutter than I have right now. Right now you start off with like a level one cutter. So a lot of the ship you can't just cut through willy-nilly. Um, the yellow boxes are cut points. These are kind of like the, the structures that will keep the, sh the heavy bar the beams and everything uh, kept together. So if you go and cut all the cut points, large piece hunks of this ship should be able to be pulled away. Um, the blue you're seeing, the dark blue, those are going to be like heavy panels. Those are things that will get processed. And then... Mm -mm. You're going to see some light blue, and those are considered light panels. Those are things we can't actually cut through with our cutter. Uh, so for this mission, what we can cut is going to be the light blue light panels and the uh, yellow cut points. But before we start cutting, let's go and let's, let's grab this real quick. Up, oh, whoopsies. Okay, well that's gone. So th there are a few hazards in this ship. Um, one of them being pressurization. Because inside the ship you have one atmosphere's worth of pressure. So people can walk around into the compartment. So this gas is actually pressing up against the hull itself trying to get out. Since we're working in the vacuum of space, there's really no, nowhere else to go for the pressure. Uh, so if we were to go and cut into this hull, that gas is going to be pushing itself way out. And then we may actually end up with some type of structural explosion. We don't want that. So the first thing we're going to do is go into the ship and depressurize the whole thing. So right here, this airlock console, the blue light says that whatever it's um, controlling is pressurized. So let's turn it up here. Goes airlock from, pressure levels dropping. Goes from blue to red. All right, it's depressurized now. We can get in. Airlock pressure All levels right. increasing. And then the outside door closes, the inside door opens, and now we're in the, the main hull of the ship. So the first thing we want to do is remove the pressure in this area. And most, most of the time you should be able to find this little AC unit here, which is actually the atmospheric regulator. Air pressure level decreasing. You hit that, it removes all the, the atmosphere within the ship. So now everything in here should be the same as outside in the vacuum of space. Um, as you're looking around, you'll notice that on my screen, you'll have like right here at three meters, and underneath that, you have uh, like a teal or a green box called barge. That tells me that this piece of equipment goes to the barge section, like we talked before. Um, these seats also all go to the barge. These items on here are pickup. That means there are things that my character can use immediately. So let's grab these. That is a fixing kit for my equipment and here is a med kit I think that's used immediately so if I was hurt uh, I would have been healed um, you'll see as I'm going through the the walls these side walls here are like low quality walls so they end up going to the furnace you see that with the red box on my screen and then you'll see some other elements that will say that yeah you want to go and get them processed all right in here this looks like it's gonna be the cockpit area Oh, looks like there's something beyond this door here. Another item to pick up. There we go. I think that's just like a hard drive that you can look at later and, and learn more about the lore about the game. 
as you explore these these ships. All right, let's go and reopen this here. Airlock pressure levels dropping. There we go. That should be it. That should be the whole ship, and now everything should be decompressed. That's good. Um, like I said, we're going to be focused on ripping up part the whole ship in its entirety, so we're not going to rush into going to the thrusters or uh, the power supply, which are the most expensive components of the ship. But we will use the engines. So these engines are pretty simple because they just have one cut point, and that's it. That's the only thing that's attaching them to the ship. So let's get cutting. Let me go put the light on as well. There we go. We can see what we're doing. And also, you notice the top left corner of the screen is something called tethers. That's kind of like the grab the uh, grappler gun we have here. Um, but what you can do, it has a stronger connection. So this will go and pull that engine straight down. And that's gonna be a lot faster than me using my grapple gun. Because as you can see here, that's as fast as I can go with the grapple gun. If I really under time to crunch. Using tethers are much faster. Alright. Let's go to the side. Salvage secured. Quick look Credit again. Deposited. Yep. These engines can just get cut. The cut point. That's one. Use my little air brake here. Two. To the barge. Now you'll notice there's these red and, and tan boxes on these items when we highlight them. I'm not quite sure what they mean. I'm not sure that's how damaged they are and how much damage they can take before it breaks. Or if it's an indicator of how heavy they are or how expensive they are. Um, but it does have informational information on it. So I just don't know what it is. The barge is below us, and as we said before, a lot of these things are going to be going. To, a lot of the items inside the ship are going to be going to the barge. I think what I'm going to want to do is remove the floor. And we can see we got these orange bra braces that are kind of keeping these floor panels connected. So let's go as far back as we can. Start working on the cut points. Uh, there's one right here. It's gonna be a little difficult to score on the other side here. Now I want to be careful. Right now, this cutter can go horizontal or vertical, but we can also change the mode to be a pinpoint laser. That's what I want right now, because I don't want to be setting my chairs on fire here. That's fine, we'll go this way instead. But here we go. And navigation is pretty interesting because we are in zero G, so you not only have back, forth, left, and right, you also have pitch, roll, and you can also kind of strafe. Alright. There goes the floors. This is going to be processed. So I'm just going to have you go right to the process area. Caution. Tether supplies running low. I'm going to pull you down a little bit. Go, go, go. Just enough to clear the rest of the floor. I'm just going to tether you out of here. Ah, uh, that's not what I wanted. That's alright. So another thing to keep in mind when you're playing this game that I've noticed is uh, with your grappler, when you go and grab something, like here it's R, the items highlighted in orange, that means you can't really move it with the grappler. You may be able to use it with tethers or other stronger items, but not the grappler. But if you go and grab something that's smaller, that's loose, it turns blue. And you'll see like a little lightning effect. That means you can move it. Um, for here, it's kind of obvious because these are just free-floating items Salvage in the game secured. to go to the barge. But later on, when you're making cuts and you want to see if you can rip out a panel but you're not quite sure yet, 
Well, you can always test first by using the grappler. And if it's highlighted in orange, then, you, then it's not quite ready to go. But if it's highlighted in blue, you should be able to move with the grappler. If, things are, if panels are highlighted in orange, or large components are hi highlighted in orange, but you're pretty sure you got it cut free, um, use the tether anyways. This is a this is junk, all right. Because a tether may still be able to pull an idol that which the, um, the grappler may not be able to do. Alright, pull the ship, pull the chairs, these electrical panels get pulled off, so we can do that, this one, and this guy over here, we don't need any of this, alright, now you'll see the cut points are also painted in yellow and black stripes, account credit applied. These were light panels, so when I made a cut, it just actually cut through the panel as well as the anchor points. Whoopsies. That's fun. It's kind of neat that it does track where you are cutting. Um, but with the pinpoint um, modification, it will just highlight that whole item and just melt the whole item Deposit as one unit. Alright, it take too long. Away you go. notice it did that whole clamp just disappears instead of what if I go and use the cutter the cutting head for it it cuts it in a line instead it does ultimately destroy the cut points anyways but for other elements um, that's good to have Come on. there you go to the barge let's just lift this right above the ship body here Tether just to huck it out of here. There we go. Right, found the store here. Oof. Let's see. All right. This is the reactor. That's a big money item right there. Um, and you can see it goes to the barge. Uh, on the left and right, you will have these fuel canisters. So that's going to be a, a fire hazard. You've got to be careful with that. And actually beyond this point here, this... Actually, we can sneak in and look at it. This is the thruster. So these are the three major like hazards for this ship when you watch out for. I think we can pull the... With this model, sometimes you have like a controller or a handling you put in to activate to release the thruster. I think in this model though, this version of that mackerel, we can just go out and um, pull it out directly. There are going to be more advanced mackerels where they have special systems to go and, and attach the thrusters to the ship. Um, like back here, this panel is actually at the back end of the thruster. And sometimes you'll see cut points in here to keep this, uh, this plate from moving anywhere. You're going to the processor. I'm just gonna back up as I'm grabbing this. I'm just gonna pull it. There we go. We'll send that way. You see this item spinning as well. If you go grab it again, it'll stop spinning. So if, if you throw something, it's out of control, and you want to keep going the same direction. Oh, there we go. It looks like it got ruptured, but I got credit for it. That's good. Yeah, so if an item, especially one that's, that's kind of big and bulky, is spinning around um, and you don't think it's going to make it into the bay in time because of this wall right here, it can, items can hit it and go in the wrong direction. If you just tag it once more with your grappler, it'll stop it from spinning. Alright, I want to get rid of this reactor next. It looks like just this one panel that's keeping the floor attached. Keeping you attached. 
got these pieces here. Which might be the case. Oh, wait, I see. These little bulkheads right here may actually be attached to the floor panel as well. Want to be very careful, especially next to this fuel. Here, I don't think so. Let's switch over to the cutter head. She's fast this way. Okay, is there anything else? Not from this perspective. Watch out for doing that. I misclicked. Luckily, it did ignite. That's good. That would have been unfortunate. Now, I could consider just removing the roof instead and then have this reactor float around by its elf, but um, I don't think that's the safest way of doing this. Let's see if we can move this. Oh, it's blue. That means we can move it. Good. Away we go. Let's stop it from spinning. And just tether it. Away you go. I got one tether left, which is good because I only have one more thing I want to move. Then I'll go and reload. Let's see here. Object accepted for processing. All right, this goes to the barge. I don't want to play around with trying to do it with Warning. my tether gun. Grappler, so we'll just throw that in directly. Perfect. Salvage deposit accepted. Credit before I head back, um, I think there's more items over here in the cockpit I can just pull out right now. I'm gonna do that. Oh, okay. I'm gonna go and actually Salvage use my brake. Credit deposited. Side. I think that's everything that's going to the barge. Later on, you can upgrade your scanner to go different modes, including looking at what items are available. But we don't have that right now. This is fuel, I think, so I can pick that up later. And that's just trash. Alright. We do have a couple other interesting things in here. I think now we can release the top panel and get rid of this right here. There we go. It's blue. We can move it. So I don't have any tethers left. That was short side of me. Let's go position myself so I can throw it. There we go. I don't want to spin. I just want you to go. That's good enough. Let's go grab ourselves some more tethers. Processing valuable object. Credit awarded. So I think the only other threat I have in this ship right now is gonna be those two fuel containers. Um, they're kind of stuck between the main body of the ship and the outer panels. So I'm gonna see if I can rip out the uh, panels on the outside. That should give us an easier time to remove those. Uh, Fuel tanks. Welcome to Vendatron 9000. Thank Tether. you for your purchase. Yeah, Have here. a nice day. So drag myself to it a little bit. Oh, too fast. I 
As I'm looking here, it looks like most of the cut points in the back of the ship are done. Except for on the right here. So let me go to the right, we'll cut these out. And then we'll see what we can do. Oh, your electric component. So some ships will have a more complicated fuel system that goes throughout the ship and there will be controls that you can use to flush the fuel out from those areas. But this is one of the more basic models. It's just a can. It's just a fuel tank right there. Straighten myself out a bit. Here, the, the purple or violet thing here is a power cell. We'll cut all these. Cut that. Cut you. Cut you. That's everything on this side. The other side still has some cut points, but we'll get back to that in a little bit. Let's see if we can remove these panels now. Hitting it with my grappler tells me that's orange, so the grappler can't move it. But I'm willing to bet my tethers can. Let's go and test this theory. Alright, I'm gonna start from the front and work my way back. Just so the panels don't get in the way of each other. So this, these two panels here are part of the cockpit. I don't think I actually detached that yet. But you should go. There he goes. Oh, there's a light. Oh well. I'll get this light instead. Additional goal still remains. That light too. Not doing good so far, guys. Object accepted for processing. Let's throw this little one over here. There we go. Hey, got one. To the barge. That should be able to bounce in. Salvage secured. Account credit applied. Alright, we got a door control. We'll pull that out. We got some lights over here on power supply. Uh, I'm just gonna grab the power supply. I think it's pretty neat that the lights turn red when the power supply's not there. Don't know what's powering those Solid lights. What's a cool effect? All right, let's get the fuel line out. Where you go? All right, I'm gonna leave the lights there. I think it's Solid gonna be too much work to salvage those. I'm gonna do the same thing in the back. myself out here. Um, oh, this may not work. Um, this particular, this is how we got into the ship, and so there's an extra room in here. And these panels that you can cut through are gonna act kind of like glue to keep this panel as part of the main room. So we're gonna work on that a little bit. Caution: tether supplies are low. Salvage secured. Account credit applied. Right down right to the far end, just so it doesn't get to the furnace accidentally. There that goes. Nice, nice, nice. Salvage deposit accepted. Credit transferred. Alright, there's no power or anything like that, just the fuel. Let's snag this. Alright, that's this is the last of the hazards. So now we see it ripped apart the rest of the ship. Salvage secured. Credit deposited. Um, after ripping apart those items, this front end I think is good to go. Most of it's being going to be processed. So the the trick here is to get this to the process area without it accidentally going to the furnace. And so that's where these little star objects come into play. This is 
is going to allow me to pull it up and away and not risking it getting too close to the, the furnace bay here. Alright, it's high up enough. I'm going to hit V to kill the, the thread, the uh, tethers. Yeah. No tethers remaining. That should give us a good chunk of change. Let's get some more tethers. Now, I'm running low on fuel as well, but if I remember correctly, I think there's at least one cancer fuel within the ship, so I'm going to use that instead of paying for my own. Valuable object posted. Credit deposited. Tethers. We're gonna need them. Let's see. So I'm just going to the structural view here. Yeah, it looks like the left side still has some connectors. But I should be able just to take this. This side doesn't. Have, the right side doesn't have the entrance way. I should be able to just move this straight into here. Oh, there we go. special over here I don't see anything gonna straighten myself out a little bit Valuable object yeah, go down here as well so you can go and snag these batteries or not batteries these lights but um for sake of time just gotta not do that for this exercise but we do have fuel yeah, and we do have one thing of oxygen as well. Alright. Now the far end I think still has some some anchor points. Let's see. Yeah, they do, but it's beyond this point. Will I fit in here? Just barely. Oh, utility key. Utility keys are good. Um, they help you uh, activate core components of a ship. Especially if some of the more complicated reactors you come across later, it's nice to have these. Because they'll automatically like, get the thrusters ready to be released. Or help shut down the reactor. Alright. Let's see here. Is there any other cut points here? No. Alright, this panel should be able to be removed now. Not the closest one, but the nose the nose panel up here can, can be pulled out. Alright. I guess I can grab the coolant tank. There you go. Alright, so what we have left and the for panels is going to be applied. this area here. So this is, this is uh, considered to be a soft. Let me double check. Yeah, this looks like it's going to be a light panel. So I think I'm just going to cut right through it and see if I can release the, uh, the heavy panels from this. not attached to the main body anymore. Actually, I think this is good to get pulled. Right? Not sure. This can go to the furnace. Looks like it's got cut already. Out you go. Yeah, it's kind of floating on its own. Okay, this is good to go. Couple pieces of furnace things in it, but I'm not gonna worry about that too much. Deposit not accepted. Oh, that was for something else. 
Go this way, see if we can get this bottom panel released as well. Just trying to cut right through here. No, it's, it got removed, so let's just take it out of here. Oh boy. Let's go and control that rotation here. There we go. Yeah, if something spins out of control, you can go and just grapple it real quick, and then it controls the, the spin. Which I should have done there, but I didn't get in there. Alright. This entranceway is all for furnace stuff. This is all furnace. Furnace, furnace, furnace. Things I can use personally, which I don't need. Uh, these lights can go to the barge, but um, I'm not going to go and pull all those out. Alright, so it looks like these anchor points here will actually keep the main body anchored to the uh, cockpit. Let's get that. There we go. Send you off to the furnace. Furnace. Material deposited. Alright, this big honking thing's ready to go. Let's get some tethers. Uh, tether one. And tether two. Caution, tether supplies are low. Alright, there goes the main body of the macro. Trash goes in the first as well. This is a combination of things to be processed and things to go to the furnace. So let's go take a look in here. See if there's an easy way to remove the stuff that needs to go in the furnace from the things that need to go into the process. You got some major bars in here, but it looks like the whole inside shell is just uh, light paneling. Oh, I wonder if these squares are actually going to keep these together. Let's burn these off. One more over here. I'm getting lag here, but we'll keep going forward. Right, I don't see any obvious way to remove this inner core that should go to the furnace from the uh, outer core, which should be processed, except for maybe manually cut it myself. I don't want to do that. I could just burn the whole inside body. I think instead I'm just going to send this whole thing to get processed. Yeah, and the more tethers you put on an option, the faster it'll move.
that's the cockpit, and that's pretty much the whole mackerel. Remaining. Object accepted. There you go. All right. Credit deposited. Yep, I know the glass and some other components weren't supposed to go there, but it's okay. All right, there's some small debris floating around, um, but I think that's it. Let's call it a day. Items upgrade next level. Looks like we did pretty good. Mostly green, not so much red. All right, everyone. Well, I hope you enjoyed this uh, little view of um, Hard Space Shipbreaker. Um, really, I hope you learned a little bit more about the mackerel style ships and how they've been put together. Um, they do can, they do change the components inside of it, and they do change how things are um, used. But at least you'll hopefully you learned the uh, the basic outline of, of how that ship is put together and how to use it. Um, and hopefully you enjoy uh, playing this game as much as I did. All right, take care, everyone.